How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. There's no face cam today because I hate myself. Um, and I didn't want to put up the green screen, so two birds, right? Anyway, we're here to play with a fun little little Tez Effects deck, as I like to call it. Um, ever since I saw this bad boy, you know, I was just, just clamoring to make a blue-black artifacts deck. And we have this guy around for a while, which makes it pretty good. Now, at a first glance, this looks like just a random mis mishmash of cards thrown together, but I've actually been testing it a lot, and it's super fun to play and actually works pretty well. So hopefully I can demonstrate that properly to you guys today. Um, the standout cards, I would like to say, is two Herald of Anguish is absolutely perfect, because you want to leave Stranded in the opponent's hand most of their kill spells. Um, once they start Fatal Pushing and Begum Spring or Thopters is when you start feeling pretty good. <laughs> um, but he also is just a straight up two for one. I like, I like to think of him as the mono black bolus because he makes them discard a card right away. Because if you're playing them right, it's either going to be while they're tapped out, if it's a blue deck, or when they don't have any, like, the mana up to play any spells that would kill him instant speed. So he does absolute work, um, but any more than two kind of stretches the artifact and mana base of this deck a little too much, so just love him, but two is as much as you want to run. Um, the removal suite is Fatal Push, Battle at the Bridge. Um, this is super important to gain you some life. Um, and also, disclaimer, you see there's no sideboard here. It's because I don't have the cards and don't actually want to spend the rares on them. It's very rare intensive, but I'm going to be leaving a link to the deck list with the sideboard cards that I would choose um, in either the description or a comment or something, so be aware of that. Um, next, we have two Pacification Array. Um, this is pretty much to get rid of, you see most of our kill spells, they scale with our mana, so if some guy plays like a Galta or something, we're not going to be able to get up to 13 mana very well. <laughs> so Pacification Ray is just a way to tap down their biggest dude. It's super awesome, it's been overperforming in my opinion, but don't want more than two, because, you know, if any time you plan on getting three out, spending six mana a turn is pretty mana intensive, so yeah. Metal Spinner's Puzzle Knot is just a cantrip, it's pretty much our divination, that also has synergies. Server Schematic is just because we don't have enough artifacts, um, it's kind of lackluster, but it gets the job done. There's a lot of times where you play, you know, Treasure Map turn 2, Scry, play this turn 3, turn 4, Tezzeret, kill a 4-4, four, four, something like that. But, man, it works out right, yeah, or a 3-3. Three, three. So, it's just kind of a placeholder. Um, for Treasure Map, this is absolutely incredible. The dream is to play it turn two, flip it turn five, and then play Karn and make a Cyan, or Tezzeret and kill a dude, or even use up one of the treasures to play Tezzeret, because <clears throat> you still get plenty of artifacts on the field. Um, but yeah, just excellent card advantage that isn't, you know, they need a Braze or something to deal with it, so it's a little bit easier to protect than all your Planeswalkers. <laughs> um, next we have two Antiquities War. This is just a really, really easy way to backdoor win the game. I mean, you straight up just flip a treasure map, Antiquity, Antiquities War goes off, Fatal Push one of their dudes, their blockers, and then you just get in for the win. So good. So good. It's just an easier pr to protect. Um, it's pretty much an easier and all at once emblem from Tezzeret, so it's absolutely awesome. I wouldn't run more than two because we are pretty artifact light, so I mean, usually it whiffs on one of the two modes, but that that ultimate, for lack of a better word. Chapter 3 is just so good. It's worth it. Um, we're also running two Friction Scriptures and one Yehenny's Expertise. Um, expertise is because there's a lot of times we need... There's, sometimes we need a Sweeper right away. Um, you can't be taking a whole turn off. Most of the time you can get Pacification Array or some Thopters out or some Karn Blockers to buy some time to have this go off, but sometimes you just need the Expertise. And I mean, doing this into like a Puzzle Knot or a Treasure Map feels really good as well. But Scriptures is just really good against the Scarab God decks or um, the Knight decks that have been coming out a lot. Some white weenies. Just a sweeper that you need in order to be able to control the board. Um, next we got three Tezzeret the Schemers. He's just... He has two modes, right? This is the way you play him. Either you play him, plus him twice, and ultimate, and win the game. Or you play him, kill two creatures, and then win the game. <laughs> That's pretty much how this guy plays out, so absolutely amazing. He's really bad if you don't have some of your early plays for artifacts, but he's incredible if you get your synergies going. Just 10 out of 10. Um, next we have three cards. He's just really good. His card advantage is a little slow, so 90% of the time, I can't tell you how many times you have two cards in your hand. Just play them, make a token, make a token, 
and then plus him, minus him. No, plus him, make a token, and play another card and make a token. Literally two or three of these tokens is usually all you need to win. Because they're going to be chump blocking your like 7-7 seven, seven after you flip a treasure map pretty quickly. And fun synergy. And Tokidi's War, when this goes off, it actually makes a 0-0 zero, zero constructs into a 5-5. Five, five. So it's all of your, the total of all your constructs, plus 5, plus 5. So you you run into, I just had a game where I had a 14-14 construct, so that's pretty sweet. Tezzeret is the most incredible card advantage engine in this deck. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, drawing three cards turn total is just incredible. Um, also, just making Thopters is a great way to pressure Planeswalkers and stuff like that. Also, it's a good way to get you towards Antiquities War going off. You get 5-5 five, five Flyers, it's even harder than Black. Great. And then I already talked about Herald of English. Um, mana base is pretty normal. I like one Arch because you need double Black by turn four, like always. So we have double Black spells, double Blue spells. You end up doing a lot of spells in the same turn because you got this dude with Improvise, you got Ferguson Scriptures. Then you got Tezzeret. The treasures and stuff do help fix your mana, but you're going to be cycling a lot of fetid pools. So there goes some of, some of your double mana lands. And then uh, the one Inventor's Fair. So I only run one Arch, mainly because I've only had to use it like twice anyway. But one Arch, because it's really easy to ascend by like turn four, turn five. And then one Inventor's Fair, honestly more for the life game, but sometimes you do actually just need to fetch like a treasure map or a puzzle knot or a pacification array, depending on the situation. But we're not running like the Colossus or anything like that. The 1010. Let, let me pull them up for you guys. For any of you who's not not knowing. There he is. Metalwork Colossus. Usually he's the type of guy you want to be running when you're running Adventures Fair. But the life gain does come into play quite a bit as well. So yeah, that's the deck. Uh, I want to show you guys some games with it. I've been having a lot of fun with it. Hopefully I can get you some good games. So let's go. Let's get it done. I have some delicious water. All right, Karn, I see you over there. Throws him off because we have, we have Sarkon, and, and we're not Sarkon, we're actually, you know, Tezifax. I need a better name for this deck. Tezifax is kind of lame. Um, I'm totally fine with this hand. Um, I actually would rather have Phyrexian Scriptures instead of Yehani's Expertise. Because one thing that's good about the scriptures is you get to play it and then the turn after they wipe the board. Usually the problem with playing a sweeper is that you're tapped out and then they put a stuff, ton of stuff on the board. Hello. See, this is just oh, so perfect. Helping you hit those land drops or fatal pushes. Um, <clears throat> It allows you to wipe the board and have every be able to untap before they get to play anything. So... Just gets a lot of a lot of great stuff going for you, but this is better against like mono red decks or knights and stuff. The stuff that gets on the board real quick, because you want to play this before they find a way to pump their Benelish Marshal. Thale, eh? I'm actually gonna scry instead of killing him because I need a land drop more than anything. Never mind. Because this should get rid of the fungus. Yeah, there we go. I'm fine with that. Because that tells me he's pretty desperate. Land. Uh, not good enough right now. <laughs> See what I mean, though? You don't You don't want to be drawing a lot of him in the early game. Oh, that's rude. All right, Jig's up. The jig is up. But this is an excellent card against these, these fungi. It's not a very fun guy to play against. Ooh, Slimefoot. Hello. Hello. Also, Puzzle Knot and the Treasure Tokens. Excellent synergies there to help make Fatal Push. <clears throat> Be able to kill four converted mana cost four creatures. You run into a lot of boluses around these parts. I can tell you that much. Wow. Speaking of lands, we run 25 lands. We have a ton of cantrips and all these scries. So this is atypical, but we'll get through it anyway. Once he lands, we're going to be... He's not good against go-wide decks. Wow. Deck, please. <laughs> Give the people something good. There it is. Yeah, that's fine. This guy is desperate, and I am desperate. Holy cow, man. All right. All right. What is that? An extra card draw and three squares. Nothing. Got him. All right, cool. This is still going to be sweet. 
I would like to draw like metal splinters puzzle knot off the top, maybe. I'd be fine with that actually. Boom, boom, got he. Um not gonna fatal push anything, that would be a waste. Guess I'm getting treasure, so it doesn't really matter what color I tap. Hmm. Yeah, I'm fine with it. It doesn't matter. Wow. Question is, do I scry again? I think so. I think I can wait one more turn, and then I have to sweep. There it is. Goodness gracious, man. I might kill Slimefoot by himself, just so I don't get drained for like 20. Um... Yeah, we're just gonna pass here. Kinda wanna kill him on his own turn, cause then, uh, since he hasn't been hitting his land drop, forced him to do blossoming defense on his own turn, we'll put him off uh, sapling migration. Is that the one? The one, the instant speed one for four. I don't want him to be able to play that in blossoming defense. Um, well, let's just do this now. Plus, Fatal Push will encourage him to play into a Sweeper more, even more, since it'd be like, oh, there it is. Yeah, that would have been a reason to uh, do it on his turn, but what are you going to do? Or my turn, rather. <laughs> I can speak words, guys. But what I'm going to show you right now, and hey, I'll take it is how well this deck just cleans up. Um, we can go, or we could play Tezzeret plus one, two, three, four, five. If he has any sort of Lord, we just die, so. I have nothing to play, unfortunately. Maybe I should have played a Tezzeret there and plused, but that'd be sacrificing a lot of treasures. So I want Karn to be good. Also, Antiquities War will just straight up win us this game. There it is. Um, yeah, that's fine. So if he has another one, that's pro there it is. Okay, rewarded, never punished. We're just gonna do this real quick. Two mana, five five. Yes, please. And I think I'm actually going to just do this right. Wait, no, I can just do this. Whoops. <laughs> I still hit space. Oops. Um, okay. Well, that changes things. I have to do it like this now. No, I'll still do this. I'm just going to play out Tezzeret. Kill the Tender Shoot Dryad. We have a blocker. And Herald of Anguish is going to be taxing his hand, so he's going to have to play everything into Tezzeret, and we're looking good. So even with that mistake, we lost an artifact because of that, but whatever. Otherwise, what we could have done is I was debating between that and sacrificing an artifact to kill. There it is, Spore Swarm. Yep, I was right. No, I was wrong. I said migration. Um, Dryad. Yeah, we could have just killed the Dryad because he's a 2 2 with this guy's ability. He's so good, man. He's so good. Sometimes you get him out on like turn 4 and you're like, oh, yes, please. <laughs> Discard your hand. Oh, that's rude. Well, at least we have Karn. But yeah, see, now we can't focus on my life total. Oh, yeah, he's like, it's pointless. Well, let's plus then. And then he's gonna feel bad. Actually. Let's just play Antiquities War. We're just gonna win it. Dude, I can go wider than your, your ooh, see, service schematic, boom. It's not always good. But when it is, it's great. <laughs> Hello. Boom. See, look at this. I can go wider than the sampling stack. Get on my level, sir. Get on my level. I say that, but he's going to play. Ooh, okay. That's a good card. And you see right there. That's the reason I took it. Antiquities War. This is really testing my enunciation. Antiquities War. Um, yep, that's fine. Being better than a Planeswalker. I mean, at least that's what I'm saying. I run this deck a lot more in best of one. So maybe in sideboarding, it's like, eh. But you're just taxing them on so many fronts. You got one bomb of a creature. Uh, puddles or not. Yeah, buddy. Okay. Let's just do one of these. 
Can I leave myself dead to anything? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, okay, let's just do this. Are you ready for math time, guys? So that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 14, so x equals 13. Just put them completely out of range. <laughs> oh man, this is where they usually start saying your go, because they don't see this until the finished product, but what are you gonna do? Menus, am I right? That feels so good against mono red. Oh man, plus it also almost always kills um, either Steel Leaf Champion or Ronus in mono green. Gotty. No settle the wreckage from this guy. <laughs> See, we didn't even draw the other Tezzeret. We didn't even have to play Karn. Look at that. What a beating. Cool. <laughs> oh, I love it. Alright. So we're 1 0. What card we get? Enraged Giant. Barf. I would be interested to see. There are some blue red cards I think would be interesting to try to run in this deck so maybe like a Grixis artifacts will one day be a thing I could try let me know if you guys want that but things like the um oh, he's like a 2-2 with improvise this is a good hand as well all right deck I see you I see you showing up um he creates two thopters when he enters five mana and then um whirler virtuoso as well I think I like playing tap land here don't need this on the board right away. Especially since most of my mana is going to be tied up in this anyway. Uh oh, where's my fatal push? Okay, so this is very much going to be a Phyrexian Scriptures type of game. Especially since most of these decks are running Vinemare or Carnage Tyrant now. There it is, yep. Oh, didn't let me scry. Oh well. Guess it worked out. <laughs> So I don't think I'm actually even going to scry here. I think I can just tap him down, make him commit more, and then scriptures get even better. Goreclaw. Fair enough. But now his ability to, uh, yeah, I'm just going to play. Scriptures? Do I scry next turn? Don't think so. Debating, this deck is heavy on fours, so that's where some some decisions get interesting. If he has Brontodon screwed, okay. That's one thing. This thing, Brontodon, makes you feel like a sad boy. Why would you... Oh, no. But why, though? So I should have lost right there. Just so we all know. Because he could have just killed my scriptures and I wouldn't have been like a six for one. So that's awkward. Um, I think I like Tezzeret the most here, because I can just get him close to ultimate. And it'll help me get all these cards out of my hand. I can even scribe a treasure map if I want. Depends on what he plays. Jade Light, yep. So I'll be able to kill that even if I get rid of this. Blossoming awesome Defense, that's pretty good. There it is. Told you guys, Vine Mare. Um, Alright, well... I think I like a scry here. This is probably wrong. But I like it. There it is. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really matter here, but holy cow, dude, that was a lot of creatures to kill. He played right into that. Um, so. I can make a token with him. Which will then let me play this bad boy, which can then block the Jade Light Ranger. And then he plays Vine Mare and I get them both with Yanni's expertise. There we go. Doing it. Cause now he can ultimate on an empty board. And I don't even I can even still wait a turn. <laughs> I can keep him around afterwards. And yeah, this is another reason. Dude, Vine Mares is every Vine Mares are everywhere. Goodness, I can English. So this is why we run stuff like that. Hello. an ethereum cell let's draw some cards i want to hit some land drops there it is make sure we get that ascend we have nothing to play afterwards but that's fine 
This is usually where he scoops. I'll just cry now, save him some time. That's fine. I would like to be at a healthy life total. Cool. See, be three battle at the bridge. I was running two for a long time, but it just wasn't enough. Let's go Swamp. Ultimate. Now I'm just going to start making Thopters. So I have even more stuff to make 5-5s. Five Don't need Inventor's Fair, actually. And once you're winning, you really start winning. You can play quickly. Once you have these three boys... <laughs> oh, man. Um. Oh, no. Well, that's awkward. Probably drew a Blossoming Defense. <laughs> There it is. There it is. We were going to have maybe lethal? 12 plus 1, 13. So close. So close to lethal. But yeah, that's the deck doing what it's supposed to do. Let's get another one. Let's get another one. Maybe, maybe one or two. It depends. I want, I want these to be about, I don't know, half hour, 45 minute videos. We'll see. Let me know, let me know what you guys prefer. Because I do have some longer ones. Like, if you want to see me put this through, like, Quick Constructed, now you should do those from my streams. Also, sorry about this music. <laughs> There's, like, like an inexplicable fan noise hitting my mic. I have no fans running in my house. Alright, this is, like, the sketchiest hand. But, like, I can't mulligan it. So we're gonna have to keep it. But holy cow, this is mono red, we're just totally dead. <clears throat> but yeah, so I'm running no fans, but I hear the fan noise. I have good, I have, I have all the settings on my mic correct, shouldn't be hearing anything, but oh well. What are you going to do? The mulligan though. I'm just so, that guy with the bronze on, man, what would I have done if he wouldn't have done that? So I guess I drew the fatal push later on. I think it was like the next turn or so. I would have done Yehenny's Expertise, killed everything except for Steel Leaf Champion. It's actually pretty good. I wouldn't have been in a terrible spot. Oh no. No, no, no. Let's draw a Sweeper, please. <laughs> that's no good. Oh, okay. That's a little bit better. That's a little bit better. Nope. I do want to hit land drops, but yep. Like I was saying, I probably gonna hit it anyway antiquities war I guess would happen the turn we flip treasure map but that's not good enough to win the game and with this deck you just you, you gotta win you don't really sneak them down and then I guess thopters will help but ugh. I just want to flip this and then get herald of anguish down so skipping the scry doesn't seem amazing to me that's pretty good I'll keep him around Like I said, guys, four drops galore. <laughs> oh, man. So that's four plus three. He comes down perfect, mana-wise. Just how I drew it up. Glorybringer doesn't kill him. He can block Glorybringer unless he exerts. He's probably going to have... Okay, what's going on over there, sir? Just the mono fight with fire deck? Karn's also quite good. I think I might like Karn more than Herald of Anguish right now. You could have a hasty bro. Glorybringer really punishes that. Let's just play Herald of Anguish. There it is. There it is. Two for one automatically. Then he's got to start playing out his creatures. Tezzeret's going to clean him up. This guy's a mountain. I'm so confused. Is he flooded? Is he just all reactive spells? Fight with fire. Yep. So that makes sense. Still a two for one. What else could he have? Oh, that doesn't curve nicely. So let's just do it like this then. Let's play Tezzeret. Draw some cards. Glorybringer isn't enough to kill him. Um, let's just play Fetid Pools. I wanted a turn to play Tezzeret and curve him into Karn or Antiquities War. Because then with him making things and Karn making things, 
he's gonna have to uh there it is told you guys <laughs> so now we can play one two three four five six seven eight yeah tezzeret kill glorybringer karn make a token or even tezzeret kill glorybringer and took antiquities war because that'll still do it as well let's make a thopter so we can kill him karn Comes out and makes a dude. Yeah, this guy's way too slow. This deck, my deck, preys on mid range. It eats it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So yeah, we can just do Karn to make it even more difficult for him. If I had to do over again, I would have done what I previously said, Antiquities War instead, but what are you gonna do? If he has another Glorybringer, he can kill one of my dudes. But. Oh, that's not even close to a glory bringer. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, dragons, I have so much respect for you, sir. So we definitely want to make a token. I think I actually want to draw cards instead. Hello. One, two, three, four, five, six. He can make a dragon eventually, but that's his whole turn. So I think I'm fine with that. So let's draw another card as well. Oh, hello. That's an easy choice. <laughs> oh, when this deck wins, it's so much fun, guys. I mean, look at this. I'm just gonna force the concede, maybe. Oh, baby. Yes, please. Maybe we should have kept, kept him back as like a blocker, but I mean, come on. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm just I really enjoy this deck. That's all I really enjoy it. it took a long time to get it to work this smoothly, but We're finally doing it We'll, we'll go maybe one or two more <laughs> I kind of want it to just be all good games like this, but I want you guys to see maybe if there's a mono red matchup If this one's mono red, it'll be our last one Or if it's a long game, it'll be our last one. If it's not, we're going we're going some more. Oh niche my deck's pretty niche, am I right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, Tezzeret's pretty great. Um, the one thing about this deck is it takes a lot of mythics, which is pretty sad. This hand's okay. Not amazing. I would've liked a one-drop artifact. That's the most important part of those pacification arrays, it's it's a one-dropped artifact. Really helps curve into some neat stuff. But, what are you gonna do? There it is. You're late. He's like, blue, black, with treasure map. What is going on? Turn two, nothing? All right, that's weird. Nope, I need a land, please. I would like to play Karn. There we go. Boom. And so you see, next turn, four. We could kill a Ronus with this next turn, so. <laughs> Am I going to call it? Ah, oh, so close. I think I can still... One, two, three, four... That'd be x equals 3, so that's not enough. Can I take a hit from him this turn? I don't think so. Wait, no, I can just tap him. That's fine. That's fine. Um, I think I'm going to hit another land pretty soon anyway. Yeah. Yep. You get, you get used to these things. So yeah, that'd be x equals 3, so that's not enough. But once this flips, bro, those constructs. <laughs> oh man. Let's get it. Blanchwood armor. Oak and form. Sixth sense. No one plays sixth sense. But I can see Blanchwood armor. Combat. He wants to tap me down so that uh, he doesn't have to play around Essence Scatter. Got him. <laughs> He's like, what? It's not Icy Manipulator. That's the reason we didn't do Icy Manipulator, by the way. Is A, we need one drop artifacts, and two. You guys you guys saw. Oh. Oh, is he splashing black, perhaps? You guys also saw how many four drops we have. That was what, four lands in a row? Holy cow. It's quite a few. Hello. Tezzeret, you clean up all my messes. What a friendly fellow you are.
No. Oh, okay. Thought he had blossoming defense. If he did, I could still tap him down with pacification rate. I would lose two treasures, but I think it'd be worth it to keep him around. Because, I mean, he makes a treasure a turn, so. Yeah. Yeah, works for me. Um, I did him over Karn because I wanted to A, keep back Galta, and B, um, any sort of fight effect or removal spell would make him be able to just kill Karn, so. Didn't want any of that nonsense. There he is. Hello, Carney T. My nemesis. Ooh, that's neat. So I can't make a 6 6 Karnstruct as well. Which sounds pretty good to me, actually. And I can keep up Pacification Ray. He still has Trample, which is awkward, but. It still feels pretty good to me. This doesn't look like a Savage Stomp style deck. He doesn't have enough dinos. Carney T. Oh. Okay. So if he goes to face, I make another Karnstruct and then I can trade with him. If he doesn't... Wow, I was actually right about that Blanchard Armor call earlier. earlier. Who would have thought? Serpapard? Sure. If he goes to face, I guess I'm fine either way. If he kills one of my Planeswalkers, that saves me a lot of life. Yeah, no blocks. If he has a second Blanchwood Armor, no, he would have just played it right there. So, because I feel like forcing the chump is good no matter what there. So let's just make our dudes bigger just in case something crazy happens. Um, I'll do Phyrexian Scriptures. I think I have to. Could hit him for 9 here, but eh. I'm gonna actually battle at the bridge just to make sure nothing crazy happens. Plus I have Tezzeret to clean up any other dudes. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So X equals 8. Just don't want to lose the next turn to another Blanchwood Armor. And plus, I have all, if you didn't have Gift of Paradise, once this thing goes off, these guys are both alive, I do have almost lethal next turn, which is pretty crazy. This deck turns the game around pretty quick. So yeah, what could he have? I mean, he has nothing to lose. Um, I do want to play around double blossoming defense, something like that, Titanic growth, whatever. And just keep my life total high. Again, I've battled the bridge, but if I untap, I have this game pretty well locked down. I can tap down any other dudes he plays. He can't play anything else this turn because it dies. Yeah, there it is. And this punishes him for not playing stuff. So that's pretty neat. Ah, I was hoping for like Metal Spinner's Puzzle Knot or something. That's fine. It's a land. It does stuff. And this 5 damage in the air is nothing to sneeze at as well. 1, 2, 3, 4. And an interesting thing too is that if I do need to draw cards, um, Treasure Cove is the one that has to tap. So tapping these for Improvise doesn't prevent you from getting treasure cards, which I think is lovely. Yeah, this guy's straight up on that mono green boggle style, style nonsense. And I can tap down two blockers, one on end step, one on upkeep, my upkeep, and then kill the other one, so... I'm looking at pretty close to lethal, that's awkward. So I want to keep him big, so I'm not going to draw a card. Well, he makes another thing though. Let's do it. Could take me off lethal and force him to chump block, but whatever. Oh, okay, that's fine. What'd I tell you guys? Oh, okay. That's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. Alright. Okay. You know. Just beating Carnage Tyrant with Karn Strucks, no big deal. Oh, 
That's lethal. You got a block. And then afterwards, I'm going to play my Tezzeret. Didn't like it. Didn't like it. Oh boy. All right. I think we got time for one more. I think we got time for one more. The Pro Tour is about to start, so I actually do want to be able to watch that. <laughs> but holy cow, man. This is a fun one. <laughs> this is certainly a fun one. All right. Let's see what you got. We didn't get to play against Blue White or Esper or anything like that. Those control decks give us some trouble. Scarab God can be kind of rough, but we don't give them any creatures. Herald of Anguish, but half the time we don't even draw him, so. Those are the ones that can make it a little awkward, um, but pretty much all you do is just you land. This is actually pretty fine, as long as it's not mono red. There it is. There it is. Ooh, okay. The Gabos. Mm. Just play a tap land. This is where Fricks and Scriptures is necessary to exile their graveyard, because this is pretty, this is like 90% sure this is Goblin Godfro's gift. Um, let's just draw some cards. You can play in Scry Treasure Map next turn. Ah, <laughs> oh, bummer. Um, but yeah, so the way you want to win against those control decks is you just get them to tap out to deal with one of your planeswalkers or something And then you land a uh, Well, either you land one of your planeswalkers and get them to ultimate or Because pretty much all your threats they have to use cast out on or they're one What's that called some some the worldly or something it's like the three mana instant speed exile target artifact or enchantment You guys know what I'm talking about a braid Smelling a braid. Nothing. Okay. This is weird. But I do have this for when he taps out for uh, Siege Gang Commander. It will be a one for one, but eh, whatever. Um, yeah, and then you land your Antiquities War, or you just get your Karn to stick around and then you kind of deal with them. Honestly, the Tezzerits are usually better than the Karn, because they can make a threat every turn. And uh, they can just steal away your Karn tokens and then you're just stuck dirtling. Oh, hello. Speak of, speak of the devil. Um, yeah, I'm just going to draw. So now I think he has to go wide to deal with Karn, or he just has another lightning strike, which could be awkward. So maybe I just plus here. I would like to see him try to go wide or empty his hand to try to deal with Karn. If he goes to face, I'll just battle at the bridge and start making tokens. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, I'm fine with this. Is he going to sack him to lane strike him again? Shock? Okay, that's totally fine. Bro. <laughs> Carton literally just read, target opponent discards two cards and taps out and you draw a card. That's pretty good. That's, that's, like, that's like a lightning, but gaining life instead of losing it. Yeah, get in there with your Skirk Prospector. So I'm seeing very few creatures. Which is really weird to me. It's like, maybe it's just a bad hand for the deck, or I don't know what's going on over there. Um, didn't scry, so there's a punt from me. I still feel like I can go low enough, and I can't battle the bridge him anyway, he'll just sack in response, so... I have to wait for another creature. So yes, I am going a little low. Well, I can still scry, I suppose. Before doing this. Uh, I led it to the bottom. Pause on that. So yeah, if he plays any dude, he can't sack in response. Well, he can sack a goblin, so whatever. But I'll fatal push before I do that. Hello, good card. Is he just gonna like... There's another shock. So maybe I was wrong. Seems like a weird deck. Just the one Skirk Prospector going all the way. Okay, that was odd. Just need something to gain a ton of life. Um, nope. I already have my land drop, thank you. Main, I actually play island, three, four, five. I kind of want to make a Tezzeret. 
Yeah, let's do that. So now I can make blockers as well. And I have plus to make blockers. I'm like Karn. I have plenty of cards in hand. If he has double lightning strike, I'm fine with gaining that much life. I might end step fatal push this guy. Who knows? Kelly, come here. Sorry, my dog. I'm worried she's going to pee. <laughs> I'm a professional. Don't worry about it. So now I can try to battle the bridge my own Thopter at some point as well. This is a very good draw for me. Create another Thopter. Two away from the ultimate. Which is a real, a real threat, everybody. One, two, three, four, five. Get him. Because if he can do eight damage with three cards, will that be double lightning strike shock? He already spent two of each, so that seems kind of unlikely to me. He clearly didn't have or didn't want to use the removal spell in the Thopter. I just really want to gain some life, but I think we have to be patient. Let Herald of Anguish clear him out. He probably has Flame of Keld in hand or something. Fling. Oh, okay. One of one of these. So if he plays a big boy, I feel like I should probably just kill Prospector in response. Nothing? Alright. Create a Thoopter. What is he doing over there? This is weird. I'll take with everyone because I'm going to make another blocker. So I'm not really that worried about that one damage coming through. Black, black. And I guess he doesn't really have that good of a braid target, so he could have those sitting in his hand, which would still go in response to battle at the bridge. And the turn. I can um, crack servo schematic to kill him as well. Thud. Okay, hold up. Nope. It's the wrong color mana. I think I'm going to do this right now, actually. Because I don't want him to go sack him, play God Pharaoh's Gift, get him back. Thud. I guess he doesn't have the mana for that, so. But I mean, it's all upside for me, so. Unless he has a sweeper or something, but that'd be weird. Good game. All right, well, that was interesting. <laughs> Who would have thought, huh? Who would have thought? Okay, so yeah, that's the deck. I mean, you saw it against all the different archetypes. We had all the tools we wanted to win that game if we if we needed to. I felt I had the position to play around um, shocks and removal like that, but if we had to force the issue, we could have just battled the bridge to our own thopters. Um, I feel like the first one probably would have been answered. The second one maybe would have gained, like, you know, 11 life or something so yeah this is the deck it works beautifully it's so wonderful be sure to check out i'm gonna have the sideboard options and all that the list easily importable will be in uh either the description or a comment under the video so thank you all very much for watching let me know what other decks you want to see i do have uh, a night deck i've been working on i don't know dragons i've been working on that'll be a while because i don't have a lot of the cards Blueback Godfro's Gift, if you guys want to see that as well. We got, we got some fun stuff. Dino Control is a little niche one I like. So let me know what you guys think. And uh, I love anyone who watched this video. You're all beautiful. And uh, hopefully I'll see you around.